Before we move on looking at more settings in WPML, we're going to translate some content. There are a number of settings that don't exist at all until you have some translated content. So let's take a look at how to do that. We're still here on the WPML languages page, but I'm going to go to the posts area. Now what I'm about to show you is called manual translation. And we're going to do it right here in WordPress in WPML. However, I need to point out that if you're going to do a high volume of translating, like if you're going to do a whole site, you should probably use a professional translation tool and it should probably be used by skilled translators, whether they're internal staff or a professional translation company. A professional tool is just going to do a better job of translating a large amount of text. However, this tool that I'm about to show you is great for translating small bits, individual posts or paragraphs, etc. So let's look at these posts. These are three regular old posts posted in English, and there are a couple of ways to start the translation process. One is to simply click this plus right here, and that would add a translation to Spanish. But if we edit the post, we get a few more options. Over here on the right, we could choose to either translate this post or duplicate this post to a Spanish version. I'm going to choose duplicate, and we can also choose to duplicate uploaded media to translations and duplicate the featured image. Now, obviously, your choices depend on your content and your needs, but I recommend duplicating these things with your post so that they look the same in all languages. So now I'll click Duplicate. And now we're still looking at the English version of this post, but there is a Spanish version. Now, if I click this pencil, I'll edit that Spanish version. But first, I want to go back to all posts and show you what it looks like now that there's another one. Now, this English one has a pencil, indicating that there is a translation. Also, up at the top here, you'll see that there's a one next to the word Spanish, indicating that there's one Spanish translation. There are three English, and in all languages, there are four. So I could click Spanish and then click Edit, or I can simply click this pencil and it will take me right over to that one. Now you'll see here that it says, this document is a duplicate of this other one, and it is maintained by WPML. We can choose to translate this independently, then WPML will no longer synchronize this post with the original content. I recommend translating independently. So let's click that. Now we're looking at an independent Spanish post, and it copied the English content over for us. If it hadn't, we could click this copy content from English. And if somehow this post got corrupted, and you wanted to start over, you could overwrite with English content. And it basically rebuilds this page. And you can see it is again a duplicate. However, the version that got messed up is still stored as a revision in WordPress. And that's not a WPML tool. That's standard WordPress revisions. So you could get that back if you wanted. This alert will appear until you publish or update. And once again, we have a standard Spanish post. And we can view that post. Now I'd like to point out that a few things on this page are already automatically translated. For example, the month name, category names, and some text here under events. That's because that text comes from WordPress or a plugin and is previously translated. If we go to the bottom and look at comments, you'll see that all the comment material is also translated. So all we need to translate right now is this content. In our next video, we'll take a look at how to translate our site content with WPML.